There's a part, there's a um, there's a discussion in this week's parsha about Moshe requesting to Moshe requesting to find an appropriate leader for for the Jewish people after he dies. So it happens to be in chapter 27, and it is a very interesting topic. 27, chapter 27 of the desert. Why is it called, why is it called numbers? Instead of desert. Because the census. The census was in that portion, but we call it La Midbar. We don't yeah. call it the uh, yeah. I mean, of course, there were in the desert a lot of, a lot of bad things happened in the course of the uh, so we don't want to call it the desert. No, we do. We do call it the desert. We call it the oh, 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 And in oh, English, oh. and in English, oh. we call it numbers. Numbers. OK, it doesn't matter. 20, I'm, I'm just uh, throwing out a query. Uh, 27, right? So in chapter 27, Moshe is told, you are not going to go in the Eretz Israel. 27. 27. Chapter 27. Well, it happens to be 19 in this Masuk, but, but we should backtrack just a little bit. It goes like this, right? Where is my chapter 27? Yeah, okay, so Moshe tells in, in, cha in chapter 27, verse 12. Yes, sir. Right? Where Moshe says, Moshe says, go up to the mountain and you're going to see the land, but you're not going to, and you're going to be gathered up into your people, just like Aaron was, right? Because you, because you, uh, whatever, you did not follow my instructions, you, uh, right? That, that, that was to sanctify me with the waters in front of the people, and so on. So Moshe says to God, he reacts, right? Since he's going to go now, to pass away, it's not going to continue. So it says, may Hashem choose or command, hey, who is the uh, the God of all spirits for all flesh? He should choose a man on the on the community that will go out before them and will come in before them, meaning to lead them, right? And that will bring them out and bring them in, right? And so that the community not be like a flock of sheep without a shepherd. Right. So Moshe says to him, okay, take for you uh, Yehoshua binun, Isha shared, he has a great spirit, and you put your hand and uh, on, upon him, right? Just your hand upon him. Bring him in front of Lazar, Kohen, and all the community, and sivita otole enehem, and command him before that. Sivita otole enehem. So the Ramban is very interested in the language, Tzivita Otoleine. What is Tzivita? Usually, what is Tzivit Sabot? What is a mitzvah? Tzivita Oto. How do you translate that word? Command before the eyes. Command before the eyes of the people. Charge. Now, literally so, before we go to charge, because the Ramban is worried, is wondering about that opinion, that word, because it could mean many things, right? The, the literal, most usual meaning of litzavot means to command somebody. So if he says to command Yehoshua before the eyes of the people, in the eyes of the people, there has to be some content to the command. What, is she, what should he tell him? I mean, let's say I say to you, command this person to go forward. Command this person to do something, right? To do a mitzvah. Hashem gives us commandments. So when he says command, Yoshua, before the eyes of the people, there's no con Hashem is not telling him what to command him. Right? So they look at the Ramban, you'll see in a moment. Uh, obviously, there are other meanings to the word litzavot, although they're not usual. Right? They're not common. Like charge. I mean, it, it, we, we say it because that's what we feel is going on here. Right? But uh, the word to charge or to place him in command of you might say it's sort of an expression. You make him the commander of. 
But that's not the same thing as the Tzavot of Do you know what I mean? Vicky. Uh, I know that if you mean anything that the word charge is that it's Amman is as command. As command. Which is true. But um, that's what his discussion, that's what the Ramban's discussion is about. You'll see if the Ramban is correct, if I'm right, he's talking about page Shin Tech Zion. Right. You see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the Ramban says like this. Vitzivita Oto, Al Yisrael. Meaning, command him about the people. What does that mean, about the people? The command on the people before the eyes of the people. Command him on the people. What is about the people? What does he have to command them? So he's saying, here, this is a, a quote. This is what you should command him. You should know the Tarchanim Heim. The Sarvanim, you should know that they are a pain in the neck. Right? Compare complainers and uh, pains in the neck, right? And refusers. And I'm telling you that now in advance so that you should accept them upon yourself. Be patient with them. Rashi. So don't complain after. That's right. I'm telling you now what they are like. And I am asking you, I'm commanding you to take on this leadership and to accept the fact that they are difficult in advance, in advance. I want to know right now. Okay. So the, the tzivita, the word, the commandment is what? Concerning them. I want, I'm commanding you to understand that they are troublemakers and I'm commanding you to be patient with them and to accept this job, even so, even so, that they are so bad. Rashi. So you see, Rashi is taking literally, litzavot means there's a certain content to the message. You're going to tell him the following thing, right? Even though the Pasuk has no hint of it, right? Okay, that's one. And Rashi, and the Ramban says, no nachon I don't agree with this position. Why does he not think so? Because, because after all, God said to do this, to command him with those words that I just said before their eyes. Which means that here comes the, the standing of the people. No, and Moshe stands, and Moshe stands in front of Moshe, in front of Yeshua, and says, "I command you about those troublemakers, those no good nicks, all those people out there. You know they're no good, and right there they're refusenicks. And I want you to accept it anyway. Is, is it proper? Maybe in private to Yeshua to say to him, you know, you're taking the job. But it's before be, their I eyes. I want you to accept before their eyes to say such a well, thing. Okay." So maybe you would say that's correct, but the Ramban thinks it's very unlikely that he would do such a thing. It would be more appropriate to talk this way between the two of them privately. You know, yeah, so. I want to tell you, I'm giving you a really bad big job. This guy is that. This right. you know, guy is that. Kibifneem, he grombahem, he pakruti says, you know, it's not just insulting. When you tell somebody you're a good, no, no good nick, then he behaves like a no good nick. He says he could means that they will they will start to be defiant more, right? If you bring up a child and every day you tell him, you know, you're not a good kid, you're a lousy kid, you're a lousy kid, and after a while, you know, so you, you, to hell with it, I can't accept, I can't get your recognition, I, you're not going to admire me, so I'll be a lousy kid, right? I mean, that was it reinforces that kind of behavior. So Moshe would never want to speak that way about them in front of them, right? It would be maybe more appropriate also that if he wanted to reprimand them, then he would speak to the people one time, not in front of uh, Yehoshua to insult them in front of Yehoshua, but to tell the people, you know, you shouldn't be like this, you should be better, you should try to, you know, be cooperative. Okay. Aval v'tzivita oto le'inehem, she yitzabenu v'mitzak, ah, good, fine, fine, aval. So rather, okay, so, so far we have uh, an opinion of Rashi, which, which uh, the Ramban does not like, right? So what does Tzivita mean if that, in that case, right? Mm -hmm. if, what does Tzivita mean? So if you look at the fourth line, Aval, mm -hmm. right? You see it? Yes, sir. Uh, fourth line. Aval, fourth line. Fourth word. Aval, yes. Fourth line, for a word. Yes, Tzivita. Oh. Uh, yeah, Aval. The tzivita atolaynehem means the following. She yitzavenu b'mitzvat hanagid v'hashofet. There is a general 
instructions for the leader. What are the, that's what you should command. What is the commandment for the leader that usually has to be? Ki ba'avur heyotol l'roj, once he becomes their leader, yaf ki deim biyado, right? He will uh, command them, command them, command them in his hand. And he will, oh, I'm sorry, he will put the people in his command, right? And that he will warn him, Joshua, to make every effort, a lot of effort, uh, in their benefit, to their benefit, to uh, lead them in war, right, of God, and that he shall bring and uh, them out and in, and <clears throat> to be careful in the matters of judgment, right, of, uh, of, of justice. And, and this, he says, this kind of commandment is appropriate to do before the people, for them to hear, right? I am telling you, like we do, you know, the President of the United States, right, when he gets up and he makes the vow before the Congress, everybody on television is standing there, and he says, I swear, to uphold the Constitution of the United States, so help me God, and to take care of the people and to, 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 to carry out my uh, legal uh, requirements of, uh, that are placed upon me, right? Um, when a leader speaks that way, or someone speaks that way to the leader in front of everybody, right, that gives the people the confidence that he is really taking on this thing seriously. We can have confidence in him that he knows what his job is, right? That he's swearing to do his job, right? So this is a good idea for the people to see. So going to the Ramban, Moshe is telling him, Yoshua, I'm putting the people under your leadership. I'm telling you that it's your job to take them in and to take them out and to, be, to keep them safe and to lead them in war and to always be just right, and not corrupt, but always carry out the justice properly. So help you God, right? And, and he does that, I'm sorry? To fight with Hashem. Yeah, the, 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 the battles of, of uh, God's wars and so on, right? And all the people here, Moshe command him to do that. So that's what's good for that to be done in front of everybody. In order that they will have confidence in him and then carry out his commands. Ki yedu, ki they now know that he is committed to uh, to conduct themselves in their affairs honestly. Because his own Rab, his own leader, had commanded him to do this in front of them. And this is what Moshe did. In fact, if you look at other psukim later on in Tvarim, Shenei Amar Sham, Vayikra Moshe Yoshua. In Deuteronomy, when Moshe actually commands him, after his speech of Deuteronomy to the people, and he's about to die, it says, and Moshe called Yoshua, Vayomer Elah, and he said to them, Le'inei kol Yisrael, in front of the eyes of all the people, Chazak ve'amaz, be strong and courageous, right? Ad lo tirab lo techat, and continues their speech to him, do not be afraid, right, and do not tremble. So the Ramban borrows from Deuteronomy, when he speaks to him that way, what God intended for him to do. Here, Moshe, Moshe is told by God, this is what you do, tzivita oto right? So he, the Ramban, thinks that that's actually what the commandment was. Command him about the concerns of leadership, the, 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 um, the actual content of the leadership, commitment, a commitment. So there's a tzivui. So according to two opinions now so far, let's about Pinky, right? But Savot means to give some kind of commandment. Going to Rashi, it's a commandment. I know I want to tell you these people are no good nicks, but take the job anyway. That's, that's because you have to tolerate them. That's one commandment. According to the Ramban, the commandment is not that, but the commandment of the leadership and justice and war uh, commander and all of that, right? To, to carry out their concerns. Two in a row so far. Okay, next. Sav et Yehoshua al Dvar Talmud Vechaskeyu v'amtseyu magid she'in shnei parnasim l'dor Le'ele mitzvot ha'nagid she'yeh takif lo'yirah la'am According to the Sifri, 
his commandment was concerning study, Talmud, hmm? is that how he translates it? Um, Strengthen to him, to him and give him resolve. This tells us the lesson that there cannot be two leaders for a generation. Oh, so he, Talmud means just um, so the, to derive from that pasuk, you mean the Talmud is our own derivation from those words? Make him strong to tell you that there can only be one leader in each generation, that he should be the strong one. I don't know. And that's what they thought the commandment was, that a person has to be strong and not afraid of the people. If you're going to be a leader, you have to be strong and not afraid of the people, kind of. Every time they want something or every time they complain about something, you say, okay, maybe, you know, like, you know, like the Swishiwashi. Swishiwashi. And Talmud. Yeah, I don't know. Talmud, in this case, sounds like it's, that's what we learn from these words rather than the thing itself. So, you know, of course, Obama would say, that's what I am doing, right? People may not like Obamacare, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, next. And he, now, so we have now three opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three opinions. There are no good nicks that accept it anyway and be tolerant of them. The commandment of the leader in terms of his attitude towards the people and what to lead them. And the third is to be strong and to make sure that you are not afraid of the people. I want you to, in front of them, I'm telling you that you're their boss, so that they would see that they will not have a right to make you push you around, but you're the one who leads. Three acres. Okay. Lefidati, the third one, fourth one. Bipshatakatu, the most simple understanding of the Pasuk. Ta'am vetsivita atalonehem hu haminui. This is your, this is yours, right? This is that in public, he will appoint them, appoint him to, in front of them, to be their leader, right? That, in other words, let's have vote means that you appoint him, you place him in the position of leadership. It's a strange way of using the word let's have vote. Let's have vote means to command. But it's sort of like an expression in this case of to put you in a position of commanding. Mm -hmm. Let's have vote, right? So, he, and he brings you a few examples in the Torah, although they are rare. Like, like, that is 95. 95 is Nehemiah. Nehemiah okay. says in chapter 5, for the day that, the, the the day that God commanded, appointed me uh, in front of them. Right? Liot, to be, to be their leader. Vechein, another pasuk, Vayitzaveyu Hashem lenagid alamo, that's even better, right? Hashem tziva, him, to be the ruler or the, or the leader of his people. Right? And I should say it's Shmuel. So Tziva there, of course, is not that he commanded him to be the leader, but he made him the leader, like, like he appointed him the leader. Right? From the days that I appointed judges on my people. Miniti, meaning appointed. Right? So now we have five explanations of Tzivita Tala and Nehem. Right? We've been reviewing them again and again. Two this which, last one, sorry? Two of, two, two of which in the, in the Ramban. Two of the Ramban, yeah. yeah I think one so. of the Ramban is content and the other one is pshat. He says, this last one, he says, uh, the fiat pshat. The simple understanding of the gospel. This last one is a simple one. Yeah. Uh, that is using a different translation of the word so you don't have to make up. See, I mean, what is the more simple? What is the more simple one? And what's the more complex? The usual understanding of the word civita is to command. So then you have to make up a content, right? You have to make up some kind of content. So Rashi makes up one content, and the Ramban makes up another content, and the Sifri makes up another content. Mm -hmm. That's, it, what should I say, it's, it's, um, it's, um, what should I, it's, it's creative. It's, it's, it's not in the Pasuk, something's missing, right? We have to make it up. Pinky, right? I mean, that would be the, the, the way, if you want to talk about commanding, why would say? Why would God say and command him in front of their eyes? What should I command? 
I don't know. That's what it doesn't say, right? So, so it is awkward to have to try to make up a content for something that the pasuk doesn't have anything to say about. So Rashi does it one way, and Ramban does it another way, and the Sifri does it another way, which makes you obvious that it's something uh, is not very compelling, it's not very convincing, right? If everybody can make up their own their own content of the Tzivui, I'll make up another one. He commanded him to give them lunch every day and to invite them to a party every Saturday night. Why not? Uh, you, would, you would laugh at me, right? You would say it's ridiculous. Well, I, uh, I tell you, I like that one. It does. Do me something. I mean, right, it's, it's more... It's more fanciful to say that it really means commandment, the Torah not telling you anything about the commandment, and then just make it up to satisfy yourself, right? However, the last one is a little more simple. Even though the word tzivui is less common to be used as the word to a point, but at least if you do use it that way, then it's a plain understanding. The pasuk is simple, right? Straight. He appoint, I, I command you, Hashem says, to appoint him in front of them, in front of their eyes, as their leader. That's okay, done. There's only one way of understanding that, it's not complicated. So it's a paradox. It's not the simple understanding of the word that's about, but it's a simple understanding of the pasuk, if you do it, if you accept that less common translation. I, I like the way he calls that pshat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not pshat. It's not pshat because the word is not usually that way. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you take it this way, then it's pshat because the word, the, the pasuk is straightforward. It's a figure of speech that makes this, right. the sentence more easy to understand. Easy. Yeah. It's a little bit uh, an unusual way, right? Right. So we have four interpretations right here. Yeah. Four or five? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's a it's a very delicious and ugly shop. Right. Ramban. That's the Ramban. He rejects Rashi and he says instead that this is Elon Akon Bay nine. And so on and so on and so on. Abal, Sibita Torahem, Sibin Mishat Nagid Rashapeh. That's all the Rambam. Having, having put down the interpretation of Rashi, he opposes his own. And he feels that that is good to do before their eyes because they will hear that he's made, it, he's made to commit to be just. Uh, there's content to the commandment. Lead them out in war. He's actually telling him these words, according to the Ramban. He's actually saying so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you a leader for them to take him out in war. I want to make sure that you carry out the justice properly. I want you to put out all the efforts in their con concerns honestly. Da -da 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 -da. He's giving him a paragraph. He's actually got the quote. And he does that before them so that they would hear that and they would say, oh, Yeshua is going to carry out his commandment because he's his rebbe and he's his leader. And he said that he would, so he will. Right? That's what Le'enehem means. He, they have to hear that uh, speech. According to the last one, the Pshat, there is no speech. He appoints him to be their leader. What does Le'enehem mean? So they know that he's been appointed their leader. You, should, you know, you take the crown, and you put it on somebody's head, in front of the people, and it's like, okay. The king is dead, long dead the king. Yeah, that's yeah. it, that's all, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No content. There's no speech, but there's a symbol, yeah. a symbol yeah. of, you know, he's now, he's taking the mantle, mm -hmm. passing, passing the stick, passing the scepter, done. Right. That's what Limino Lim is, the last one. So, Manyet, what would be the most uh, convincing, I mean, the second, uh, the second, one, the second one, no. What? I mean, uh, the most, what should I say, the most impressive to the people, no? I mean, I want you to know that you have to be just. I want you to know, Yoshua, that you are going to be the commander in war. I want you to know that I want, I'm, I'm commanding you to carry out 
the your functions in the good for the good of the people, you know, for their concerns. It's got, it's got pretty important commands there, right? For them to hear him say that. And command him before their eyes. Yeah. That means that uh, he is his Tami. So he, he knows his master for a long time. He has watching That's him true. and a lot of things. Yeah. So and he will, and will obey him. Right? Yes, the only problem is the only problem is if that was true, you would say the Osnehem, not the Ainehem. You would say with, within their hearing. Right? You should tell him these things within their hearing. So they, what, what we're saying, they will hear him say that. The Ramban actually says so, right? They will hear him say that and then they will believe that he will be an honest, good leader for them because he has been told these things, right? So what is the Ainehem? It's an expression that would be a little more difficult. Now, be, if you say the last one, appointing, Take off your robe, Moshe, and put it on him. And you appointed him as their leader before their eyes. People could be a half a mile away, and they're looking, and they see, wow, look, look what we saw. Moshe just passed the leadership on to Joshua. A word doesn't have to be spoken, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's to the eyes. Mm -hmm. It's to the eyes. So actually, the literal meaning of le'enehem works better with the pshat, in a way, right? It is a, uh, um, a ritual of appointing. There are no words to necessarily hear, mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. To see, right? I remember when I was a kid and I was living in uh, Montreal in Canada, which is part of the British Empire, one of the Commonwealth countries of the British Empire. So King George died and uh, George the was it? Died. And his daughter, Elizabeth, Elizabeth yeah. was appointed king. Queen. Queen. And uh, this was in 1955, 6, I don't remember exactly. I was a child. It was before, I was 10 years old, 11 years old, something like that, 12. Mm -hmm. I was living in Montreal. And first of all, there was a shock about the king who died, right? And then there was going to be the appointment of the king and the queen. And it wasn't just, you know, so he died and the queen becomes the queen. There was coronation. Coronation is the crowning of the queen. There was a television already by that time, so it must have been already when I was about 12 or 11, because in the beginning when I was in Canada, there was no TV. Early 50s. This is 1955 and so. So I remember we went to the one television that there was in the street in my friend Gabriel's house. No, not too many people had TVs. A little box in the living room, just long before you were born, you know. Oh, and um, six, five, six, seven. you were six or seven already in 1955. 55, I was three years old. Three years old. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, so we were sitting there hushed, and I remember this. It's black and white, of course, this television. You could see the film today. I'm sure if you look Google it, you can find it somewhere. These horses, you know, after one after the other, horses with uh, the soldiers, you know, with the uniforms. And then the carriages of the nobility, you know, the people. And the, and the prime minister and the house of lords and come, coming. And they slowly walked into this great cathedral um, mm -hmm. of St. Mark's, I think, this huge cathedral, right? And they walk in and they sit down. And we, we were with our mouth open and so much pump, beautiful clothing and furs and lights and swords and uh, amazing amazing you know and the big fur hats you know of the of the uh, guards of the national guard and then finally finally the, the priest and the and the prime minister walk up to the podium way ahead you know it's a long long thing and the queen the queen to be then walks down right? not just walks right a step another step. The trumpets are playing. It was incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to picture you. You have to see it. You have to see it to believe it. And then she finally comes up there and she kneels down and the, and the head of the Church of England raises the crown. And uh, maybe, she, maybe he said some words. I don't even know. Some Latin words, whatever it was. And, he places this on her. and the trumpets went crazy. You know, the loudest tickets, you know. And she gets up gives her the sword of the leadership of the king. 
You didn't need any words. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This was an appointment, right? Minui. I mean, so laying a hem, that's all it was, laying a hem. You see, that's you right. see the queen. The guy is the queen. That's all you have to hear. You have to see, you don't have to hear anything, right? So, yeah. so I just reminded of it. So this minui is a is a Sivita to la in a hem. I saw it too. Huh? I saw it too. You saw that that uh, film? You remember it? Yeah. Pretty impressive. I was a little kid. I remember so it's very special. Little, 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 little than you. <laughs> well, when were you born? Forty-six. And I was born in forty-four. 46. So uh, the beginning of forty-four. You know, January forty-four. Born in forty-six. What month? May. May. Well, so your birthday was a little while ago. Did you know we had a birthday in May? No. I missed forty-five. Like that. What date in May? May 7th. May 7th. 7th of May. Both my granddaughters were born in May. So it's a good month. Better than January? I don't think so. So, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we are both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Halpern was married and got born in May? Yomad Smaut? Yeah. Um, May 5th? Yeah, yeah, May 5th. Oh, well. My granddaughter was born on May 5th. The, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the older one, Jordana, yeah. So that's a pretty good Ramban, no? Because it makes you think about what it was Chivita. Otole in a.m. And... Well, I mean, you want to look one posuk back? Look at Yud Beit. Do we have time? How's it going? Yeah, yeah, we have another few minutes. Yud Beit. Alei al Avarim, right? The twelfth. He tells him to go up to the mountain called the Mountain of Avarim. Let me just say yes. Yud Beit. Since he's not in connection with this, I was, my, uh, my daughter this week, I took it from the Nevesh Tankoma, and he took, uh, instead of that, Alei al Avarim, I say, he said, why, he asks, why, why, what's the connection between this and the inheritances? So he says, who is, uh, Just before this, there's a commandment of how to inherit the land of Israel. Uh, Moshe is told now how they will inherit one day in Israel, even though he's not going to be there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. Except that he thinks, of course, Hashem said, uh, This is how you should give the land. Nasan Chitain. To the Bidasakha, that sounds like you will give you will give it to them, which means You will give the, the, the inheritance of land to them. Which means that you will be there. So Moshe thinks, Oh, I guess I'm gonna go after all, right? <laughs> he, says, he says, Oh no way. Going up to the mountain. No, way. no way. So when I commanded you, I meant to tell you that this is going to be done through you because you will command it, but you are not gonna be there. Anyway. Yeah, uh, right. So here he tells him to go up to Arvari. So, <clears throat> by the way, this is the only place in the Torah where this mountain is called Avari. What, what is it? What, what, what does Avari mean? Right? Avari, the passing, the, the, the whatever, passing. Uh, whatever. We don't know. We don't know. That's that's the that's the question. The word is weird, right? So he says, "Shame haharaze har nivo." First of all, he wants to tell you this. Not it doesn't call. It's not called Avari. It's called har nivo. The transition, the mountain of transition is, is that the Avarim. That could be. What does Nevo mean? I don't know if it means Nevo. I don't know what Nevo means, right? Nevo with an Aleph <coughs> is to come, right? But Nevo, Stamkacha. Okay, so I don't know. It's a, it's a word, right? So yes. let's assume that we don't even know if it has any meaning, but in those days, the mountain was called the mountain of Nevo. Nevo. And it's called that way today. Yes. Kasher Piresh Besedra has The plains of Moshe's. Like in the, the plains of... The plains of Moshe's. Moshe's. Of Moshe's. Yeah, that's where Resident. he's going to go. Yeah. Kasher Piresh Besedra has Later on in uh, this Seder Dvarim, in the end of uh, Dvarim, it says, it calls it Har Nevo. Bezot Abracha also. It's called Har Nevo. Aval, but instead, why should he be called a different name here? It is on the crossing of the Jordan. It is the place near the crossing of the Jordan. Where do you cross the Jordan? 
So if you want to go to Harnevo today, you can go there. We think we know where it is. And from Harnevo, you could go down the mountain and cross the Jordan, because now there's a road there. I mean, going over the Jordan. <laughs> So I don't know what he meant then by crossing, but people probably went across the road. What were different but, uh, I mean, why, why there rather than yeah, everywhere else? Right. Why, why there's more of a crossing than other places? Well, I'll tell you, if you go south of there, then you have these very steep mountains of Har Moab into the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. Right? The Jordan, at Yericho, the Jordan pretty much comes to an end before it starts to widen out into the Dead Sea, into the mm -hmm. right. North of there, further north of there, it's a river all the way, all mm -hmm. the way. And there may be places to cross that were not too difficult up higher in the north as well, but you remember they're coming from the south, mm -hmm. right? They're coming from uh, Moab mm -hmm. and from Sodom where Petra is and so on. They're coming up the west, uh, up the east side of the Dead Sea and they're coming to Yericho, and here is the end of the trip. They are now going to go to Israel, into Israel. So it may not, it doesn't mean that this is the only place to cross, yes. but it's the early crossing point that they came mm -hmm. to, and from here they're going to cross. There was no point in them going any further north. You know who goes further north? Uh, the son of Kalev goes up and captures another town north of there, and so on. I mean... Some, some of the Ruvain and Gad and Shevet Menashe wanted a little bit of more land there, so they expanded northward a little bit instead of going across. But the people go across here. So he's saying that it's called Avarim because this is the place where the crossing is going to be. Umishami Avru, Eter El Eretz Kanan, Kasher Amar Kan, right? And here he tells them this is where they're going to cross. Asher Apnei Yericho, that is on the face, face of Jericho. Jericho. And you could see Jericho from Harnevo. On a clear day, on a clear day. So if it's very cloudy and misty and hazy, it's a little bit murky, but you could see the mountains of Eretz Israel from there. You could see the hills going up to Yerushalayim from Harnabal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kesham Avrut Ayardin, and that's in fact when they did, where they did cross. They went, that's where they crossed. They crossed to the Gilgal, which is east of Yericho. Mm -hmm. uh, where is it? What was it? Let me get my uh, jagger on the screen here. They're coming from the west to the east. East. From the east to the west. They're going from the east to the west. To the west. Okay, and where's... Um, and Jericho And Jericho is about the same north-south point as Yerushalayim is, right? except it's down at the Jordan. Okay, and uh, Gilgal is where? Gilgal is the place where they made the, the, tw the 13 stones, the 12 stones, and they, could, they wrote down the Sefer Torah on them in 70 languages, and they made the first Korban Pesach, and so on. Mm -hmm. So that was at the outskirts of Yericho, east of Yericho. That is, they didn't quite get all the way up to Yericho. Yericho, Yericho was at the river, but a little bit further in, a little bit further west. Mm -hmm. So they're east of Yericho when they did that, when they made the Gilgal, okay? Now you have a problem. Hashem tells him you're going to go up on the mountain. Yes. And yet, Indeed. I mean, here Indeed. we are in the middle of the Midbar. We have a long way to go in the Torah here, right? A lot of things will happen yet. Mm. Right? So, does, is, is Hashem telling him to go up now and he doesn't go? What's going on? So he says, this is not a commandment that Hashem told him to do that right now. He would be obligated to go right now. Aval, but really the meaning of it is, I want you to go up, because there I will show you all the land. You remember, he promised him that he will show him everything that Eretz Israel is like, and maybe even show him the future, what will be. I mean, there are all kinds of medrashim about what he, Hashem revealed to Moshe before he would die on Havarim. Right? Hodio kilo al yadcha techaleka aretz. By the way, that's what you were purporting to do, right? That he wanted to tell him that now that you will not be the one to to distribute the land to the people, because you are going to go up to this mountain before they will cross over to Eretz Israel, and there you will die. Here they will die, and not. And nothing will reach you about this land except the sight. 
except to see. The king, Kafachat Yehoshua, and even the commandment about Yehoshua, which we just now read, by the way, is also take him at the time when you will die. He's not telling him to do it right now. This is what your future is going to be. You're going to do that also. Bevo yomcha tikachat Yehoshua ba'ashrei makatu yosafer ki asake Moshe b'leib shalem. He did that with all of his heart. Who asiyah she yosir? What is they? He read Moshe kasher amu rashira. Who or she abinu? What? When the day, when your day will come, when your day of death will come. In other words, Yehoshua's appointed day will come. When your day of death will come. In other words, Yehoshua's appointment was also not now. When he told him go up on the mountain and take Yoshua and Sivita Oto that we just read about, that is all a message to, to Moshe that you think you're going to inherit the land for, for the people. I want you to know you're not going to be the one to be the leader, but rather you will go up here and you will die here and you will eventually uh, tell Yoshua all that he has to know about the people and da 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 But that's not right now. It will be. I want to tell you that now because you think you think that you're going to be the one to give the distribution of the people of the land because I just gave the commandments of how to distribute the land. Don't get the wrong idea. This mountain is where you're going to die and you're going to appoint Yeshua instead of you. And Yeshua went up with him to I doubt it. Nobody went Only I was conducted. So, only God Aaron had already died. I'm saying only Aaron was conducted when he died. When he, Aaron died, he was conducted by Moshe and the Lagai up to his mouth. Moshe went alone. Only he and God. God uh, kisses him and puts him to death. And, uh, so so after, after command, command, and Yeshua, down on earth, then Moshe goes up by himself. But, he, but the question is, he said, go up to the mountain and appoint him. So that means that he has, he has to go up and appoint, appoint the crown and whatever. No? And after that, okay, you're, you're going you're gonna to rest. You're going to kiss you. Eh. Hmm? Hashem tells him, you're going to go up on the mountain and die. Moshe objects. And he says, before I go and die, don't let these people be without a, a shepherd, like a flock without a shepherd. First, choose a leader. He doesn't want to go up. He's not going up. He's here. He's downstairs. He knows he's going to die. But he's downstairs and he says, I want you, don't let the people be without a leader. So Hashem says, okay, but Yeshua appoints them before the people. So that's before the people. That's the before the people, but that's not to go up. Before, before, up. before the people. Because that, 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 that. No, no, no. But remember, he tells him, before I go up, I don't want you to be leaving the people without him. Yes, and Shem says, okay, yes, you'll take Yoshua and you'll appoint Yoshua as leader here on earth, or in front of the people. Then later, he will go up. It's in response to Moshe saying, I don't want to, be, to go with him before I have to go up. I don't want to go up. I but the idea to the people, all the people, all the congregation of Israel, seeing these events, they have to be in, 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 a, in, a, in a high place. How high? I don't know. But stage, like a uh, stage. Yeah, it's like a stage. No, it's like a stage on a stage. Okay, how much of a height do you need to see? Yeah. Yeah. Mountains up. People didn't see him. He means, he means, yeah, I know, I think he means. The, the people never saw him. He Moshe killed. The people, people didn't see his body. People didn't see his departure. He just went. He disappeared from their sight. It's a very mysterious death, but one day we'll learn about that piece when he actually dies. That's the very end of the door. But uh, it's very mysterious.
Satan, Satan showed them the image in the heaven, in the heaven. Of Moshe's, of Moshe's lying there, right? Yeah, I don't know this matter. Right? See, they don't. They saw, they realized that Aaron was dead because Eleazar was down with his clothing and with Moshe. Aaron isn't there. So, they, here, Moshe goes into the mountain, and that's the end. Now, the last time he went to the mountain, and they thought that he was gone, they made the Aga. And he really was coming down. So, what about this time? Maybe he's going to come back tomorrow? So, the Medrash, the invention is that uh, they were given a, a vision of his uh, body of life. It's a good question. How did they know that he had to come back? He said to them, I'm going away. He said to them, he said to us. He said to us. I know before my death that they must behave properly, and I know even after my death that they're going to try and test God many times. So he said, I thought he's going to. They must, they should remember what happened with the end of it. Yeah. Because they might wait that they were dying. Yeah. So therefore, I guess that's why they know that they will not do it again. Yes, exactly. Yeah. How we can be sure about it. And no way to say again. Our vote will ask goes up on our devote. This is the last chapter of the book. He woke up his God to speak that he's overlooking the devote. And Hashem shows him the land and everything. And so on and so on. And the Negev and the Khalil and the... Uh, and this is the land, Hashem says to him, this is the land which I swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov to give to their children. I have shown it to you, but you will not go there. And there Moshe dies, the servant of God, and inherits Moab by God's mouth. Before that, I wonder if people before the birthday, there's a whole lot of people Ashrecha Yisrael, mi kamocha am nosha ba'ashem. Magei ezrecha ba'ashem. Cherev gavatecha mi'ibe chashu, o'yvecha lach ve'atal ve'motena t'broch. It's very good. Who is like you, the Jewish people? Who is saved, not by me, not by anybody. Saved by God. Who will vanquish your enemies? Nosha ba'ashem. And he wants to, say, to remind them, right? You are not... Well, you, you're not really me, me, right? And you're not, I wasn't the one who was Moshe. I remember I said, Moshe was Moshe, I used to say, oh, was the Redeemer. I was telling you, you are so wonderful, Jesus, because you know that you're the Redeemer of God. He's, he's putting himself down, so to speak. You don't want me to be depressed. Don't be depressed. You have got Very uh, emotional. Uh, and only once. Now.